you know, we were very much dominant force until the big German hit this morning. So, uh, congratulations. Just a heritage for flywheel. What can be more appropriate than this fantastic Humber staff car? Morris Isis Ford Cortina Estate I've never seen one of those before, I mean admittedly I've not been looking for one but Welcome to Old Classic Car today we are down at Bista Heritage for Flywheel. We've not been here since 2018. Um, it's a really look good day out. It's a two-day event this one. It's a mixture of cars and aircraft up in the sky as this is a former airfield. It was RAF Bista back in the day. So let's go and have a look around and see what cars are here today at Bista Heritage. If you saw my Mulvern 2022 video we found a glorious grey lady version of the Alvis. You can tell it's the grey lady by the spoke wheels and those air intakes on top of the bonnet. That's a, that's a rare one, never seen one of these before. Yeah? It's not bad for 46 or 7. No, no. Elvis TC21 slash 100 grey lady, Tickford, drop head coupe. Even in the car park it's worth having a look around. Look at this fantastic Morris Isis, the six cylinder version basically of the Oxford what a super clean and rare car and just look at the registration number I wonder if that's original to it but either way that's a super clean very rare car bench seats old newspaper on the rear parcel shelf this is exactly what you'd do to it. This is yeah. ideal, isn't it? That's perfect. Lovely radio as well. Right here, folks, we've passed this lo lovely little Marcos. This is the car club parking area. There will be cars arriving throughout the morning, I am sure. So we'll have a quick look while we're here. It's just after 10 o'clock opening time. We've got a Series 2E Type 2 Plus 2 there on the G plate. Obviously, being the classic car channel, we will be focusing mainly on the older cars. But let's just have a look because it's a real mix of newer cars. Series 2 E Type, Ferrari. Let's go and have a look up here because I can see. A Gordon Keeble, and you don't see Gordon Keebles all that often. This is a 1964 car. What a beautiful looking GT that is as well. That's a rare old car. It's the only car to have a, is it a tortoise or a turtle as its badge. Beautiful looking car. I love those knock-on wheels as well. Gordon Keeble. Very much in a similar mould of maybe, I don't know, a Bristol, that kind of car, isn't it? But you don't see them very often at all. Audi Quattro, Porsche 911 Targa. And I find myself drawn to the row over here because we have a beautiful vintage Alvis. That looks like a proper used Alvis. It's what's that, a 1250 I'm guessing. Yeah, it's got a 1250 owner's club badge on the front so I think we'll stick with 1250. There's the Alvis hair on the front but I love the split windscreen, the V windscreen. The old carriage type door handles as well. Beautiful. What about this car? It's very old. Proper cast number plate alongside the Ford Thunderbird. Couldn't be more different. Look at this huge Thunderbird. There is a spot of rain in the air. Let's carry on around here. Just have a general look around and see what's here. A Citroen Visa. 
Again, huge variety. It's a bonny little car, isn't it? Last time I saw one of those, we were hurtling around northern France last year on a bit of a trip. If you haven't seen that road trip video yet, please have a look at that one. Got on the Land Plus 2, 1971. With the old Lucas Square 8 lamps on the front. And here, a Vanguard, a Phase 3 Vanguard estate, no less, in the livery of the RAF. The RAF used many, many Vanguards back in the day, the earlier Vanguards, and also these Phase 3s. Look at that, Handy Page Victor, 57 Squadron RAF. One of the original V-bombers, of course, alongside the Valiant and the Vulcan. Such a practical car, that is. These, I know these have a huge toolbox built into the rear tailgate. It's like a split rear tailgate on these. So obviously the rear window lifts up and the bottom bit goes down and built into here is a huge toolbox. It's a really hefty toolkit with these. I'm not sure if we can see, I'm just about to see it in the back there. But that's a lovely car. And there's that Visa. That's a 309. It's a Goodwood Limited Edition GTI. Yeah. Let's keep going. Look for the interesting cars. Still raining a bit. There's a bit of rain around, you can see it, whether it'll come across here or not, who knows. The beautiful 240Z Datsun. Aston Porsche. And over here we've got a Mark 1 Golf GTI. What's that beetle on the end there? Isn't that beetle a beauty, complete with period roof rack? We do approve of that. Those slopey headlamps tell us it's one of the earlier six volt cars. But there's so many different versions of the Beetles that are built over the years. Oval windows, split oval rear windows, larger windows like this one. Complete with the uh, little louvre thing in the back window there. Nice period option. Dodge Challenge RT. Ford GT40 replica. That must be a hoot. <laughs> it's beautiful Austin Healy, an early Healy 3000. There's a tonneau cover in place, which is probably a very good idea today because you can, as you can see it's already getting a little bit damp. Such a huge variety of cars. I'm here with my youthful assistant today. He's doing a video for his car attraction channel. We followed this down the motorway. It's at Lotus Elise. Aston Martin, DBS, one of the V8 DBSs. This is a manual. Is it manual, is it? Well, first cars who had the Aston Martin straight six in, but they soon switched to the V8. There's that 240Z. Oof, very tasty. Morgan. Little Alpines, quite nice for a modern car, I'll do like those. Of course we, we do approve of those. Mark 1 MX-5, gorgeous Alpha. About 1971, this particular Alpha, one of the 105 series cars. Lovely jubbly. TR3A. A few moderns over there. There's that Vanguard again, beautiful, I love that. Back of the uh, Elan Plus 2, the T Bird, another Esprit, the Jaguar Mark 2. Just the spec of Mark 2 I would really love to own. Painted wire wheels, dark green, British racing green, cutaway rear arches, 3.8, that's the daddy, the big engine version. They were available with the 2.4, the 3.4 and the 3.8. I'm guessing this is manual overdrive, yep. Yeah. That would be a lovely car to attend events like this. And We have here stunning Jensen Interceptor. 
alongside the DB4. What a beauty that is, Aston Martin DB4. As stunning as that is, let's have a look at the bullnose Saab. It's a 1959, it's a GT750 engine in this one. I think that's triple carburet, as that means. Or was that the Monte Carlo? I'm not quite sure which, but yeah. <laughs> What a great thing that is. I do love the bullnose Saabs. If you have been around the channel for a little while, you'll see that I did a video a year or two back about the bullnose van that I found way back in about 1990 or 91, somewhere around there. That's now in a Saab collection over in America. But yeah, I've got a real soft spot for these two stroke bullnose Saabs. Daimler SP250, Morgan over here, the 66 Mustang. What do we have here then? Let's have a quick look around here. So that's a Lagonda. Some of the small Lagondas were called rapiers, so that could even be one of those. <laughs> what do we have over here? Yeah. Complete with much timing equipment. A beautiful little Riley. Is that the Riley Sprite, I think? I love the waterfall grill on these. So different to the normal Rileys that you usually see. That and that's a beautiful that's car. Lovely. Beautiful, beautiful car. So those cars are making their way onto the demonstration area. There's the old control tower here at Bista. And the lovely old Riley is heading out the cars for day one of two here at Flywheel at Bista Heritage. I just love these random displays you get at events like this. Several old aero engines on the back of this cab over US truck from the Second World War. Cab over, of course, because the cab and the driver and his mate sit over the engine as opposed to behind it with most normal trucks. I'm expecting to see some lovely old aircraft today here at Bista as well, including aircraft such as this, a lovely Piper Cub. It's beautiful, that is. Looks like the militarised version. There we go, bit of information here, thanks to the Light Aircraft Association for that. And over here we've got a pair of military half-tracks, American military half-tracks. I remember having a toy one of these when I was a kid back in the 70s and I just thought these things were just so cool. You wouldn't argue with that, would you? All very civilised. And this, as a rally car, was, was you know, one of their... ...the brakes on the side. ...the stains in nearby Felton in the Bitcoin era were, were yeah, Two frames up in the air now. Yeah, so we've got a yellow Tiger Moth uh, and an uh, Imperial run by David Sutton Cars. Uh, and that's the Big Rockman deliveries. Uh, Rob Smith is really trying hard. Uh, Rob Owens, the vintage car radiator company here at Mr. Heritage. Um, vintage aircraft radiator company. Um, fantastic. Um, the fact that 
40 odd years later, this car, but look at it, I'm straight shot on the screen there of this car. Young girl, it's a challenge, so first hundred escorts, 1300 Avengers, that sort of thing. This is Will Onions again, another uh, Group 4 RS escort, so again, mid 70s, a car. Yeah. And, and the escort as well, you know, everybody wanted an escort, whether it's a one or two. The cars were very affordable or very achievable. I think this is Phil Harris now, the unmarked white escort. going pretty strong in This is a Mark 1, so, yeah. and again this is in uh, full forest spec, so big art. A more affordable and probably just about as tunable version of BGA. Yeah, the BGA initially more powerful. That's it. This is uh, Phil Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Y
De Havilland Chipmunk, that's an old RAF trainer. Beautiful pre war Alvis. Well, I've never seen an Alvis with a mascot like that on before. Uh, calm yourself now. As a fellow uh, Tata owner, we've got Debbie Elder uh, in a 1958 Turner. Now, uh, you may think, oh no, actually, that's just a, a, a spridget that somebody's done something to, but you'd be entirely wrong. Yes, you would be wrong. Thank you. 
Cockman Tony races this car regularly. Like and he told me this morning it's been going. this coffee van here based on the old Morris J2 what a Bobby Dazzler that is there's a fantastic early AC Cobra of course it's based on the ACA's back in the day Carroll Shelby, the American racer, he shoe on the V8 engine. The early cars, I think, had a 260 cubic inch engine, which I think is what we're looking at here. Most of them were 289s, these early bodied cars. Then they went to the wide bodies and the 427 cubic inch. But I've got a feeling this is an early 260 powered car. Well, that's a proper period sports racer. And that will be an absolute blast to take that round the demo track here at Flywheel down at Bista Heritage. Wowzers, what a beauty that is. All right, we're going to start wandering towards the main area over the way where all the cars and park outside the many many classic and vintage car related businesses here at Bista Heritage what a wonderful place this is former RAF airfield from the Second World War and all these buildings have been repurposed all these many events and I believe in here in the big hangar over here we have a bit of a wasn't it, racing A40 over there we'll have to have a look at that a bit later but I believe in this hangar here we have some auto jumble Many, many bits of motoring memorabilia for sale. I can see a few stalls over there. So let's have a quick look around. The beautiful Bristol 400 there. Isn't that a cracker? <laughs> We've got some pedal aeroplanes over here. Let's have a quick look. I quite fancy a go in one of those myself. <laughs> Wow, and here's the Blue Diamond van, we've seen this one before, owned by Blue Diamond, the uh, Riley Restorers Preparation Specialists. Isn't this fantastic? We saw this at one of the scramble meets here at Bista Heritage just a couple of months ago. An absolutely beautiful old Riley van of the 1930s. It's great, isn't it? Done up like a race support vehicle. The Blue Diamond Racing Department, Bista Heritage. Well. Really centered, yeah, really, really nicely done. Many radio control scale model aircraft here. Look at that Spitfire at the back. A bit of everything here today. That's what makes events like this so interesting. Right, we've got some bits and bobs there. And I've been persuaded to go and have a look at the memorabilia stalls, so I think we will do just that. Yes, plenty of opportunity to lighten your wallet. Many, many interesting things. Some old, some not so old. I like that trike. That's that's very neat. Reproduction petrol cans. Many many signs, all reproduced. Makes them quite affordable. Got some car parts over here. Reproduced posters. All sorts of goodies, copper piping, fuel lines, etc. 
etc. All within this wonderful Second World War hangar. Isn't it great that this is all being repurposed again? So many airfields have just been left to rot away. This is more our sort of thing, isn't this it? This is more our sort of thing. A bit oilier here, a bit rustier. Yeah, that's a nice one there, isn't it? Brooklyn's banking on the can. Yes, yeah, nice and oily. Kind of, yeah. I know, yeah, it is, isn't it? I can't see Harley coming here without buying something. Yeah, some lovely things on this particular stall here at Bista. Many, many American and Canadian plates there. Steering wheels, car brochures, books, books, and more books. We like these. I think I've got every one of these motor racing ones. I'm not sure about that one. So I've got that, 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 that. I'm always on. I've got that one as well. I'm always on the lookout for these old. Uh, children's annuals because some of the illustrations are just beautiful you've got the banking there at Brooklyn's absolutely lovely 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 stuff many many more motor racing books Duncan Hamilton that's a magnetic board racing game I've got one of those at home um, you could get like you could get one of these games which was designed to help you learn to drive supposedly and there's like a little operating lever and it moves a magnet under the board and the, the car on the base is a little piece of metal and that allows you to steer the car around the course in this case at Alton Park which is our local circuit how cool is that? And that's Sterling Moss in the van wall yeah, gamages, those are beautiful, those oil cans so that side you've got the, the Schneider Cup and then the car yeah, the S5 is it? The Schneider Cup race plane. Ooh, spanners. <laughs> yeah. Some lovely things for sale. Oil pourers, oil cans. Now I've learned to be strong. Yes. I've got the spanners. I'm done with spanners. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Lovely foot pump there. And you'll need a backlight. Half the job is identifying some of these backlights. So what's that Bedford? Minor. Possibly that's Bedford CF. Morris that's minor. an early minor or a yeah, TR2 or three or something like that maybe. Mm. Mm, that's Beetle, isn't it? That's off the that's, front yeah. wing of a Beetle. And that will be generic. Yeah. Some of these are be sort of minor. Though. Yeah, probably. So much to see. Old Dodge bus there, one of the old Malta buses. It's just a wonderful, wonderful setting for all these vintage car related businesses. And today, all these stalls, the auto jumble stalls, memorabilia magazines, brochures and so on. It's just a wonderful place to spend the day. I could live here. Mile. What's Harley pointing out to me over here? A Renault 4 CV pedal car no less. Never seen one of those before. I mean, admittedly, I've not been looking for one, but how cool is that? Renault 4 CV. I'm guessing 1970s, something like that. It's plastic rather than metal, so that sort of dates it to sort of more recent times as opposed to a long time ago, but. That's a very cute little thing. Oh, 
Well, there's so much temptation in here, I think I need to get outside. Let's go and have a look in the inner area. See what gems we've got parked over here. And I can see a somewhat modified looking S-Type Jaguar. What's the story with this then? Moon disc wheel trims on it. Many, many stickers. <laughs> a very, very original looking Beetle next to it on a 1965 registration. Look at the pattern there on that. Some might call it wear, but I call that beautiful aging. Just want a very thin wipe over with a bit of boiled linseed oil. Hmm. Nice early one, isn't it? Not quite the earliest, but it's No, it's fairly early, it's mid-60s, isn't it? This side's a little bit more weathered. Yeah. I think that's a De Dion Bouton. Over here we've got a Ford Falcon V8 from 1964. It's a pretty wild looking race car that one. And then we've got some of the very very early cars that were going around the demo course before. A 1917 Ford Racer. Presumably based on the Model T then, being 1917, we've got another one here as well. Wow, <laughs> there are so many tuning parts available for these, so many modifications and upgrades for Model Ts you could get, even when they were current cars, there were so many things you could buy for them. Over here, we've got a little Turner, this was a sort of rival to the Austin Healey Sprite and the MG Midget and so on. We saw this one going around before the HWM. That just sounds phenomenal. Well, we are at a former RAF airfield, so what can be more appropriate than this fantastic Humber staff car? Good grief. If I lived a bit more locally, I'd, uh, I'd bring Big Dodge down here, because uh, that spends its early years on an RAF airfield just like this, transporting crews out to their aircraft. Yeah. Look at the size of that. Cheers. I think the body of this is very similar to the toll that we had. I think the main body. Yeah, it's lovely that, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably my favourite here. Porsche 356 Coupe. Late Series 1 E-Type here, a 2 plus 2. Not quite late enough that the covers had gone off the car, off the uh, headlights. But yeah, this is D-Reg, so that's about 66. You can see it's a 2 plus 2. Longer wheelbase, higher roof, longer doors. And a row of seats in the back as well. There's a the little electric Testarossa. See a little information board here on the Humber. Let's go and have a look. Let's get in there. 
Yeah, should be done. Brad Pitt will be pleased. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, you were planning to stay in overnight. Oh, it's 12. Is that a 40 Mark 1 race car we saw before? What a bonny little car that is. Maybe I should do that with ours. Mm. This is a car mart. That's good. Most people tend to pick the Mark 2 A40s because they've got hydraulic brakes all round, whereas on these, it's hydraulic brakes at the front. Then you've got a pipe coming through to a cylinder under the floor about there, and then from there back, it, the brakes are rod operated, so it's hydromechanical, the brakes on the Mark 1, whereas the Mark 2 A40 has hydraulic brakes to all four corners. It also has a slightly larger engine, a 1098cc, and uh, probably just lends itself to racing just that little bit more. But they did race and rally Mark 1 A40s back in the day, but when the Mark 2 came along, I think most people switched to them. They also had a slightly longer wheelbase than Mark II's as well. Same overall length of body, give or take a few millimetres here or there, but they actually made the wheelbase just a little bit longer and just moved the back axle just a little bit within the same shell. So that's the, those are the main differences between the Mark I and the Mark II. Trim differences, slightly different front end as well. Bentley are one of the supporters today here at Vista Heritage for the flywheel event. Over there we appear to have a Jaguar D-Type, one of the long nosed D-Types with the fins on the back. What a stunning car that is, it was a car just like that that won Le Mans in 1955. Wowzers, here in the public car park, another Gordon Keeble. This one on a very appropriate GK registration. Yeah, I've not seen one of these for quite some time, so to see two here today. What a swish motor car that is. Just shows it really pays to keep your eyes open when you're walking back to the car for a sandwich because otherwise you might miss something like this. Now here we have another late Series 1, well Series 1 and a half E-Type. Again a 2 plus 2 but this one is a fraction later than that other one we were looking at because yes it has lost the covers over the headlamps by this point in time. This is a fairly late example of the breed. Again a 2 plus 2 long wheelbase 4 seater although the rear seat is folded in this one. Automatic gearbox, the rocker switches as well, because the early cars, as I've mentioned before, the early cars had the little flick toggle switches. But these, they had the, the rockers. Now, if we just walk down here, I can see we were heading in totally the wrong direction for our car. We're meant to be going to have something to eat. But 
the lure of a classic parked amongst all these modern cars. All right, we've got a TR5 here. A beautiful sounding car, the two and a half litre straight six. And we've got an Alvis, an Alvis for sale, in fact, BNU409. Now what's that, a speed 25? Yes, a speed 20, it says in the window there. Naughty, what a car that is. That is one handsome, handsome son of a gun. Just look at the lines, the shape. Just wonderful. That was a beauty, of course, of cars of this era with separate chassis means it was a lot more straightforward to rebody them. Whereas monocoque cars, it's much more tricky. For sale. Like, Yeah, that really is a splendid old car. What do we think? So swish, isn't it? Swish. Yeah. It is, isn't it? It's a beauty, isn't it? Lovely big sunroof. Hmm. Complete with the all important sunroof drains. Yeah, that is lovely in there. It's just not overdone, but just nice. Mm. I like, look at the interior, though, there's still some sort of creasing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's nicely mellowed, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I do like the saloons of this era, possibly even more than the open top cars. Oh, definitely. I think yeah. they, well, certainly they have the Alvises. Yeah. No. And then again, the sort of the Taurus are sort of three times the price of yeah. the likes of these yeah. hardtops, aren't they? Yeah, probably. I think these are probably a better looking car. Probably rarer as well. Yes, I'm sure. P6 on manoeuvres. What a beautiful Moggy. Morris Minor 1000, late 50s. So by this point in time they got to the one-piece screen, but they still have the so-called clap hand wipers. So that one sort of goes like that, and the other one goes like that. Which is a nod back to the split window cars, that's how they were. Later Moggy 1000s, they had the conventional wiper arrangement, but these early ones still had the clap hands. It's nice to be the four-door as well, you don't see as many nice four-door Morrises but I actually prefer the look of them compared to the two doors I just think the design is a bit more balanced lovely AA GB badge on the back there and an AA members handbook 1958 to 1959 of which we approve shame there's no apostrophe but never mind anything else of interest what's that this looks like some looks like a 2CV based kit car of some sort it's a, it's a good C motor, good C engine on the front. Good heavens, no idea what that is. Wow, look at this Bristol here. Cool, look at that. Four pipes out the back. MGA, MGA Roadster. I'm very fond of those, I like those. 1600. It's a B-series engine that featured in so many BMC cars of the 50s, 60s, 70s and so on. This one's 1622, same capacity as that in the A60 Cambridges and the, the contemporary Morris Oxfords. What have we got here? Harvest Gold, is that MGB GT just like Dad's? Pagoda Roof SL, albeit with soft top rather than the Pagoda hard top. <laughs> Look at that, XK120. Very nice. Probably an alloy bodied car. Louvers in a bonnet, bonnet strap. Doesn't that just look a treat? Alongside that, we've got a 66 E Type Series 1 fixed head coupe. Not bad public car park finds, aren't they? No, no, no. It? It's very agreeable. Yeah. Sierra Cosworth, is that an RS500? We appear to be going in totally the wrong direction, but never mind. Yep, RS500, complete with dealer plates on, for rows of Telford. People would be all over that if it was <laughs> yeah. Show, wouldn't they? Yeah, right. what have we got? Anything else here? Or should we start heading back towards the car, which was the idea all along?
I think we will do that. But we will go past this 4.2 E-type. Look at the pipes on that. It's a serious pair of exhaust sticking out the back of that. That must, I bet that sounds wonderful. The pipes on this 4.2 E-type look pretty special as well. Suitable weather protection afforded to this Morgan here. I was expecting the weather to turn inclement before the day is through. That's probably not a bad prediction to be honest. There's a lot of cloud around, but we will plow on regardless. That's a lovely little MGA. I should really have another look at this Bristol. We've got those beautiful knock-on Dunlop wheels, a bit like the D-types used to have. Well, they do look nice on there. Very similar blue to that SL Mercedes just behind. Look at this stunning 240Z, the Samurai Datsun 240Z. Samurai with the tuned up versions, but I think they had to spell Samurai differently for some, I'm not sure if it was a trademark reason, but there was a reason, but. Those are fantastic. What a swish looking car that was. Big straight six engine under that swoopy bonnet. Really stunning looking car. I bet that sounds nice as well. Straight six is always good. MGC. MGC GT, the big BMC three litre straight six under that aluminium, I think it is, bonnet. Next to that, Lancia Fulvia. V4 front wheel drive, lovely little car. And here, a lowered Mark III Ford Cortina Estate. I've seen a few Triumphs parked here in the car park. And this is a Triumph Dolomite Sprint, of course. There's a little badge on the rear corner in bright yellow. What a sharp looking car that is. Someone kindly pointed out recently in the comments below one of my recent videos that apparently yellow was the only colour you could have a Dolomite Sprint in in Australia. I never knew that. Yeah, this is a very sharp looking car indeed. Right, we're going to head back in now and have a proper look around where all the businesses are located. More over in the centre of the site, over the back there. A lovely V8 Aston Martin. Look at this fantastic Series 1 Land Rover here, 1527, super duper original, all original paint, a few little working repairs here and there, but we love that kind of thing, especially on an old Landy. It looks just fantastic, not quite sure what year that would be, early 1950s, they were introduced in 1948, that's a slightly later car, but not much. Yeah, that's great, I love that. Series 2 fixed head E-Type. The DB4 GT sounding absolutely wonderful when it's being revved. The E-Type behind is electric, but that sounded fantastic. So what else have we got along here? Some real beauties. I'm not quite sure what we're looking at here. Lister of some sort, I think. Yeah. That could be a Lister Chevrolet or it could be a Lister Jaguar. Fraser Nash. And what do we have over here? XK fixed head.
a stunning Lagonda. Although on these, the way the running boards taper in at the front, that seems to be a bit of a Lagonda thing. No shortage of Bristols here today. And what's this one? Is this a 405 possibly? Funny the one to have like these little fins on the back. Let's have a look. 404, there we go. January 1955. Yeah, neat little car. Very neat indeed. That mighty car we saw driving around before, the Manasco Pirate. We've seen this one at various VSCC events, hill climbs at Prescott, possibly Loughton Park even. I'm sure it doesn't always carry this silencer on it. What a spectacular cars these are, this, this era of car. What an incredible bit of kit this is. Here we go, the Riley Menasco Pirate, 1929. <laughs> Over here, next to the magnificent Manasco Pirate, we have this Hispano Suiza Delage of 1926. Cool. The car's engine was originally in a First World War single seater fighter plane, a D27. And the chassis is from a car made by Delage in 1930. Hmm. That's a proper engine. Yeah. Lovely MGB GT over there. Yeah. Wonder what that's off. <laughs> it's epic, isn't it? Oh, what a thing that is. So it's like V8, is it? That Big old aero engine. Look at all got one, two, three, four, five, six. So V12. It's yeah. a V12, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Many carburetors. Three per side. Mm. So you got a magneto per side, presumably. Really savage sounding sort of yeah, cars. Superb, aren't they? Imagine that on the road, how great that. <laughs> There's another one we saw driving around before, old Delage. Pretty weird driving position. Over here, pale green Jaguar C-Type or XK120C. This is an ex Sterling Moss car. We saw this one driving around before. Apparently this was the car that the disc brakes were developed on, which ultimately went on to the race cars at Le Mans and so on. So this is a very historic car indeed. I just parked over here minding its own business. XK120 Roadster. Beauty in black.
and use your grill. Otherwise, it looks pretty spot on, doesn't it? Two very special Jaguars. There we go. Sterling Moss. And Norman Dewis. Norman Dewis was the test driver at Jaguar for so many years. He was involved with the development and the testing of the C-Type Jaguars, the D-Types, the E-Types, the XJ13 race car, which never actually raced. He was involved in the development of that car, a quad cam V12 mid-engine sports racer. Yeah, so the name of Norman Dewis is very much etched into the history of Jaguar. Now, what's my youthful assistant spotted over here? Many of the workshops are open here today. What was that in the corner? Um, I'll have to have a look at them. That red one. Yeah, I'll have to have a look at them. Because <laughs> it might be, um, yeah. BMW Z1 in the shadows there. <laughs> Fiat 500 here. Somewhat modified Mark II Jaggy with many louvers in the bonnet. Just do kind of suit it. Mm, lovely, lovely jubbly. There's the old Silverstone Fire Tender Jaguar XJ12 Series 1. XJ12, so that'll be the standard wheelbase version of the V12. These didn't make a huge number of these, only in the sort of high hundreds, probably, something like that. Before the Series 2 came along, of course, the E Type Series 3s had the V12 engine in as well. But this is the standard wheelbase version of a car I used to have in my early 20s. I don't know, I'll have to have a look. I'm just being asked if this one's got a manual box in it or not. Let's have a look. It is, yes. It is indeed. Manual manual gearbox. Yeah. yeah, all these were automatics usually. The XJ12s, they were all autos. The E-types you could get with a manual gearbox. And the early XJS V12s could also be ordered with a manual box just while they were using up leftover stock from E-type production. So this is a special built car. A manual XJ12. I've never ever seen one of those before. Just turn a corner and oh, all manner of wonderful cars. I have to confess, I do not know what this is. Bitzerini, according to the hub there. That looks pretty wild. Here's that Jaguar D-Type, the long nose D-Type that we saw before. Gorgeous cars, absolutely stunning car. Yeah, the long noses have those fins on the back. Um, and if you look at those fins very carefully, you'll notice that they're not dead level. They are sort of slightly over at an angle. You probably can't really see. I'm not even sure if I can see, but. See where the bracket comes across, it says XKD605, so it's a matching number as well. Is that been owned by Jaguar all its life? Yeah. Got a Morgan Plus 4. <coughs> Next to that, another historic Jaguar. Surely one of the best looking Jaguars of the last 40 years or so, the XJR15. Absolutely stunning race car. Beautiful looking thing. We saw this one driving through before. But yeah, these are just gorgeous looking car, I think that is. Cobra.
lower Bentley. A supercharger hung out the front there. Yeah. So why will I love this Mark One? It's a 3.4. Yeah. Yeah, it's got the yeah louvered bonnet, cutaway rear spats. Yeah. That is a proper proper car. Many, many great badges on it as well. Brooklyn's, the Curia Cos. was that independent team race? So many Jaguars back in the 1950s, and I think they're still active to this day with different cars. JDC, Goodwood Road Racing Club, and the British Racing Drivers Club. Yeah, that's a proper car, steel sliding sunroof. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit special that isn't it? Every time we come here we always pay this one a little bit of attention, this old David Brown aircraft tractor in RAF livery. That's the kind of thing that would have been used in the Second World War for towing. Not so much aircraft perhaps, but bomb trailers, that sort of thing. But yeah, I guess it would pull an aeroplane. 356 SC. MG Magnet. It's a lot busy around here. Ford Model A. MGC bonnet raised. There's that big BMC 3 litre engine I mentioned before. Old fire truck. That Austin 7 special. There's that early Cobra. Proper Cobra, not a replica. An original car, that is. Lovely, that is. Yeah, 260 cubic inch. Oh, there's a surprise. Step away. Fantastic. That Austin 7 racer there. And another one here. Oodles of pattern over this little Morris 8 Series E, it's a two door car. Supercharged V8 and then nothing at the front, yeah. all the weight at the back. It's a bit scary. Yeah, 
Well, yes, but it's not taking liberties, is it? Yeah. A work in progress with this Riley being rebodied. So many Rileys, so many Rileys, different shapes, sizes and ages. I don't think we've seen any of the BMC era Rileys yet, but plenty pre-war cars. How about this, a Renault 12? <laughs> Looks like it leads an interesting life. Beautiful Elvis. This also appears to lead quite a spirited life, judging by all the mud on it. MGA. Truly all sorts of cars here at Bista today. Oh, this looks a bit nice. Just another rapier. Yep. Rapier being the small version, the smaller cars in the Lagonda range. Look like Marshall lamps on the front, French Marshalls. Yep. What a stylish little car that is. Isn't that just beautiful car? What do we have here? Hmm. What year is C? C is 65. Oh, okay. So it's on proper Baranis. Yep, yeah, Baranis. Yeah, very, very nice indeed. A 250 GT short wheelbase Ferrari V12. Mark 1 Austin Mini here, NFO Two wheelers haven't been forgotten either. Stunning race prep, Norton here. It's out of Manx Norton. It's a matchless. It's at the tail end of a Vela set here. Usually these have the sort of the slim fishtail exhausts, but not this one. Lovely stuff. Uh, Mackey. We've got a Mark II Ford Transit. <laughs> there were quite a few transits down at Gaydon. Only last weekend, uh, the video for that particular meeting, the classic and vintage commercial show, 
held at the British Motor Museum, Gaydon. Should already be live on the channel by the time you see this one. If you've not seen it yet, please check that one out when you're finished here, because there are quite a few old transits there. No shortage of Alvises here. Right, got some cars for sale over here, so let's go and have a quick shifty. AC, big AC drophead coupe, probably mid to late 1930s. Morris Mine 1000 convertible, 527 POD. Looks like the original registration, which is always good to see. A little midget 1500. An Austin 7 box saloon, about 1932 or 33, somewhere around about there. Yeah, this AC is a bit special. Have a quick peek in the cabin, shall we? So many controls on the steering wheel or the, the centre of the steering wheel on cars of this age. You've got your headlight switch there, side, dip, head. You can change the, the charge rate, summer charge and winter charge, because in winter, of course, you've got your lights on more often, so you need more charging. Then you've got ignition A and R, advance and retard. So when you start it up in the morning, you go full retard, and as soon as you can, you start advancing the ignition timing. And that's, that's what you do there. So you've got quite a few controls, and I'm guessing this is the for the semaphore indicators on the side as well. So lots and lots of controls, all within the centre of the steering wheel there. So you don't have to take your eye from the road particularly to control them. So that's a, that's a very neat system indeed. And there's the little pop-up semaphores there. So what else do we have? Mighty Rolls-Royce, Riley, some real beautiful pre-war cars here today, enjoying the sunshine. The Sunbeam Talbot, late, late 1930s, it is swish isn't it? Yeah. Mm, yeah, like a gunmetal metallic isn't it? Crashed iron plates. That's right. <laughs> Some beam Talbot, I'm guessing 90. Lovely jubbly. Early Rolls Royce. Now we saw this one last time when we came for the scramble. An Opal Cadet. Now, there were lots of people walking around it last time, so. Uh, we can probably get a bit more footage of it this time. But what a great looking car. The front of that is so similar to the Renault Juvacatra, which was produced either side of the Second World War. This is the German Opel Cadet. That's got to be a very rare car in this country. Almost well, unique, I would have thought. I don't think they ever sold those here in you, did they? Maybe someone watching this video will know for sure. Let me know in the comments, but I've got a feeling. I mean, it is right-hand drive, so maybe it's always been here. I don't know, maybe they were sold here, but if they were ever sold here new, it would have been in tiny numbers, I would have thought, because there were so many homegrown cars to choose from back in the 1930s. And buying one of those funny little foreign cars it was kind of looked down upon, frowned upon a little bit in those days, whereas nowadays you haven't got the choice. But back then, choosing one of these funny little foreign jobs would have raised the eyebrows of your neighbours somewhat, I think. It was a very streamlined car. Yeah, you can see the way they were thinking, there's no running boards, I mean this is, nine, well, I'm guessing 1930s design, maybe a slightly later build, but I'm sure that design dates back to the 30s. You've got no running boards, the wings don't stick out all that far, and the, headline, the headlamps are sort of streamlined into the bonnet. So it's all starting to blend in, which will be the case on the later cars after the war. You can see how thoughts were turning towards blending things in together. Oh, a lovely little car that is. And alongside that, we've got an Alvis 1250, I think. And what's this here? Mighty Humber. I've got a feeling this one was in the corner in the building when we came here last time to one of the scrambles earlier in the year. 
It's good to see that mighty saloon out and about today. What a beautiful looking car that is, real quality. Beautiful car, sort of, what, late 20s maybe? Beginning of the 1930s, 31, 32. It wouldn't be much later than that, I want to thought. Nickel plating, not chrome plating. Someone's obviously put these plastic indicators on later, but that could be that could be sorted out fairly easily. Otherwise, looks pretty much as it did in the early 1930s. Yeah, beauty that is. Got something electric whirring behind us. Let's just carry along here and have a quick peek inside the building, see what cars we've got. Just dodge down the side of this lovely Sunbeam Talbot. Got a gaggle of classic motorcycles here. BSAs, the Jalera. The Clino. Mm, things for sale. Jowett Jupiter hiding away at the back here. These were built in Idle up in Bradford, sold alongside the uh, Javelin saloons. A boxer engine in the front. Quite an advanced car for the day. Anything take your fancy? Which car of these for sale here today would you drive home? Maybe it would be the Jowett in the corner, the Alvis. I room. don't know. We've got a couple of coal scuttle fronted Renaults here, vintage Renaults. Didn't need the radiator grill at the front because the radiator is there behind the engine. Renaults always did things their own way, as we have uh, come to find out back at OCC HQ. Um, what would I go for from this lot? I've already decided. Oh, nice MGA. Um, probably be that. Really? Yeah. Would it? That is beauty, isn't it? Yeah, it is but nice, is, isn't it? That is also that is just a big, big pre-war saloon. That does appeal a lot. But this is, this is one of my favourite ones I've seen. It's not your favourite, is it? Yeah. It is nice, isn't it? All you need is just to get a big sort of supercharger. <laughs> supercharge it? I suppose you could do. Oh, yeah, yeah, you could do. Them in the sort of yeah. CC yeah, yeah. Our yeah. videos of the Prescott Hill climb. Indeed, yeah. Plenty of those no, I like this big saloon. Headlights are looking a bit droopy. Yeah. Looking a bit sad, maybe it hasn't moved in a while, so I think they want, it it's deserves. Been, it's been here every three times we've been here. Yes. There's two scrambles and yeah. just climbing. Maybe there's an offer to be made. <laughs> yeah, that's a funny one, that, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I do that's like that. I do like that. Let's have a quick peek in and see if we can have a look inside it. It's nice Sneak down here. It's been sort of worn away quite nicely, hasn't it? Yeah, lovely headlining. It's west west of England, cloth headlining. It's yeah, it's sort of an, an older restoration that's sort of mellowed in, isn't it? It's nice. Yeah. Oh, this is sort of original around here, Oh, do very nicely. Quite like that. That sort of oh, yeah. That's quite mm. nice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big old saloon, that's what I fancy. Yes, you. Yeah, I guess you are a bit more sporty than I am. Although this Alvis actually, the 1250 is also quite nice. Mm. You see quite a few of them around. Those headlamps are. Are they a bit later or off something else? A bit massive. They're quite big, aren't they? Yeah. And if you want to see, I suppose. I do like this Klein on the end as well. Lovely 20s tour. So no. As much as the lights. Yeah, it's oh, nice. Clino. There you go, you like that one, you're the old stick. The old stick. Yeah, the battery's hidden in there, isn't it? Yeah, the battery's in there. <laughs> yeah, Dad always gets angry when he sees sort of modern stickers on old car batteries. Yeah, I don't like modern stickers on old car batteries. <laughs> you're right. Oh, we've got a list of prices here. Oh, there's a lot more than those in here, isn't it? Better not look too closely. 
don't exist. And it, so we were getting frame rates of... Austin 7 Trimmy here. How about an Austin 7? Yeah. It's just a bit slow and small for me. Quite small. Yeah. I think I'd save up for something bigger. Mm -hmm. Lowton Park. Yeah. Mm, DB6 Volante. Our second Lancia Fulvia sighting of today. Now what have we got here? It's not the TD, is this the TE or the TF21? The stacked headlamps. The Austin 7 special here. Now, <laughs> that is one classy looking motor car. Aston Martin, I'm guessing that's a, is that the Mark III. Beautiful, beautiful Aston. No shortage of wonderful cars here today. Another Aston. In Bristol, we saw that 404 before, the little two-door car. This is a four-door, still with a little funny little fins on the back. What's this one? Is this one the 405? Don't know. Austin 10.4 drophead there, a four seat Tora, another Alvis, beautiful Bentley. This Alvis we saw parked in this position at the last scramble meeting. And yet another Fulvia. This one with the matte black bonnet to cut down on glare when you're rallying. That was a thing of the rally cars back in the day. It's a very smart early V4 Saab. Left hand drive. Lovely lineup of Alvises along here. Four Alvises, different bodies. Probably all Alvis 1250s, I would have thought. So Griffo. What do we have here then? Maserati. Which one's that then? Which one's this then? No clue. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see if there's any clues around the back. I think it said some writing on that. Ghibli. Ghibli, eh? That is nice, isn't it? I'd prefer this. Oh, yeah. The 
Shelby Daytona Coupe. That was an Evolution, Fastback Evolution version really of the Cobra. Complete with Triumph Herald bonnet catches. <laughs> right. well, not for Herald, that. not for Triumph Herald, the bonnet catches. Thanks. Okay. The 427. What a great pair. Another Jaguar D-Type. Look at this, Alvis. Hey, and he's going like that. Chevette HSR, work in progress. Oh, well, I could bring it. I could bring a couple of my cars here for their way. Let's just carry on our general walk around, see what we can find. Various rally prepared escorts. What do we have here then? GN, a little GN light car, isn't it? I quite love this car, do you remember it? <laughs> Um, well, you can phone me afterwards and we'll talk when it's rude to talk. <laughs> no, I'm worried. <laughs> I just wouldn't wait. <laughs> A rubber bumper MGB Roadster there with humping bonnet MGB V8. It says in the window three and a half litre V8 with five speed gearbox. Yeah. Citroen Light 15 right hand drive, a slough built car. Yeah, it's been converted. Yeah, yeah it's been converted. Yeah. Even like a I remember that's something strange about it. Yeah. A slough built car, right hand drive. The chevrons behind the grill. You don't, you don't need to bother about chevrons in front or behind, you just have to look at which side the steering wheel is on. Yeah, but it could have come from South Africa, couldn't it? Do you think they've got the holes in this grill so that they can put it on the inside of the outside? I doubt it. Yeah. And what are they for? Don't know. <laughs> S type Jaguar. Audi TT, future classic, modern classic, the last in seven. Armstrong Sidley Sapphire. <laughs> yes, 4.2 E type. So we have here a little Morgan. There's the XJR15 firing up over here. Let's go and have a quick look at that because that's not something you see every day. That's an incredible car, isn't it? So much better looking than the XJ220 road car, I think.
That is just a stunning car. I don't do many modern cars on the channel, but wow. Very sporty looking XK150 here, debumpered, very very smart indeed. Ooh, nice badge. It's almost an Aston Martin green, XK150, like yeah, XK150S. Ooh, very swish. Right, let's carry on up here, see what gems we can find. We appear to have an ex John Cleland Vauxhall Cavalier BTCC or British Touring Car Championship. Car. car. <laughs> <laughs> Bentley corner now. Many, many Bentleys. Tidy than my garage, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> Thunderous. Indeed, thunderous is the word. Carry on over here. Love the little bright red 356 Porsche. Lovely wheels on them, aren't they? Yeah. I really like the style of rims on some of those. Yeah. Yeah. 911, it's younger brother. We've got some interesting cars over here. There's that Vitesse, the blue Vitesse that we saw before, the white stripe. Got a Crayford Cortina, convertible version of the Mark II Cortina. Overland. Sunbeam, stripped down to its bare necessities. The Lamborghini Espada. This one featured on a video I was watching only the other day. One of the coupe versions of the 126 Mercedes. The Dion Bouton tricycle. What a treat to see all these lined up. Beautiful Michelin tyres as well. I'm 
we're going to head back over to the demonstration area now, I think. Just walk around this beautiful little Bugatti. Yeah. This Mazda RX-3 has been exercised several times around the test track here today. One of his hubcaps flew off a little bit earlier, so it looks like he's taking them all off now, just so he doesn't lose any more. But that was going surprisingly well for what is like a fairly standard road car of the early 1970s, albeit rotary engine, but that went really, really well. A great little car. Some vintage Americana over here, this mighty, mighty Hudson. It's huge. Gigantic Tora. Oodles of space in the front for the driver and passenger. And in the back here, you've got a full screen, no Mickey Mouse little screen, a proper screen for the rear seat passengers. <laughs> Quite a dandy motor car, isn't it? Oh, a mobile picture house. Oh, it's Har Harold Lloyd. Harold Lloyd. Harold Lloyd, fantastic actor, comedian, I guess. Mighty Chrysler. What do we have over here? The third in this trio of hugely impressive, huge American cars. Wow. Let's have a quick look here. Cadillac. What a magnificent car that is. Have to stand back a bit to get all that in. Coupe class at Pikes Peak. They did it with the Bentayga first of all uh, in uh, 100th anniversary year and then followed it up breaking the record. <laughs>
spotted the Austin 8 Tilly, little ex-military truck here based on the Austin 8. Now I'm not too well up on my military vehicles but I'm guessing that these extensions on the centre of the wheel there are in order for this to be lifted up on ropes perhaps. That's my guess. Let me know in the comments if you know please. Well folks, I think we have probably seen everything we needed to see here today at Bista Heritage at the Flywheel 2023 event. It's been a really great meeting, the weather's been really good as well, really on our side. Just a little bit of a shower just before we got here, but other than that, it's been a lovely warm day. Many, many interesting cars to see, old and new. There are lots and lots of cars over in the car club area now, quite a few cars have disappeared now. It's just gone four o'clock, so people are starting to disappear and they'll all be back again, no doubt, tomorrow, but we won't be. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video at Sunny Bista was of interest. Please check out the rest of the channel. There are a couple of videos already on here 
for scramble meetings here at Bicester Heritage that took place earlier this year. So please check those out if you haven't yet seen them. Anyway, and there'll be more videos along very, very soon. So bye for now. Look at this wonderful XK120 drop her coupe we've just spotted in the car park. What a beautiful car that is. Looks very used. Used and loved, but not overly pampered. Yeah, that's great that, isn't it? It's nice to see a good used one. Complete with number plate held on with cable ties, no less. <laughs> it's fantastic. What does it say in the window? Bit of information. SK120, 1954, three owners from new.